Hi, this is Kevin Croak, head coach at UCD Rugby Club. In this series of interviews in conjunction with club sponsor Crow, we talk to past and present players who share their memories of the club and how it has impacted their career both on and off the field. In this interview, Shane and I catch up with Greg Jones. Greg brings us through his journey from St. Andrews into UCD and his move north to Ulster, moving through their academy into their professional side. To get us started, could you give us a quick rundown through you coming into school, um, your career in UCD and what you're up to now? Um, yeah, so went to St. Andrews, um, obviously not the biggest rugby school, but in recent time has produced probably a lot more professionals than it has in the last sort of 40 or 50 years even. Um, then when I was in St. Andrews, basically always sort of, I was encouraged, I remember by my dad, like being young enough saying, if you're going to play club rugby after you leave school, you should definitely give student rugby a go and play for um, play for a college because he played, played for UCD and really enjoyed it. And then basically, yeah, played in UCD for three years. Really enjoyed it. Played with loads of lads I would have sort of played with before. Lads I would have played against in school as the way it always is. Um, had a really good time, yeah. And then at the end of my three years, basically got... Um, well, after I played the the twenties World Cup in my the end of my second year in college, probably, and then um, was like offered a an academy contract in Ulster, um, and sort of agreed that I'd be able to finish my final year of college, get my degree sort of done, play another year with uh, with UCD, and then um, and then move up. So that's basically been the road until now. I'm up here four years now, um, well settled. Yeah, played played a good bit of rugby, having a great time. So. When you came into UCD, um, obviously you said you were playing guy, playing with guys that you used to play against. Any yeah, any standout names that you would have come across and thought, "Jeez, that guy's really good." Cool. Yeah, I hated him in school, but he's <laughs> pretty sound too. Yeah. To be fair, um, <laughs> I guess like a lot of the guys I would have played with in the first couple of years who were really good, I would have kind of played underage with because I was in that. I was born mm. in January, where I sort of got to play a bit with two kind of age grade years so yeah. those first two years like obviously you played with so many good players that I'd sort of played with before but I'd say with the senior team like the two the two are there's a few guys that sort of spring to mind who I didn't really know before playing with them and was like seriously impressed with um Barry Daly's definitely one um he's just like so athletic so strong just able to sort of make something from nothing and I remember it was always great like having a winger like him that like if someone made a line break and just gave him the ball you just knew he was scoring like there was every single time um then another guy who was I was always so impressed with was Patter uh to Timmons just just on a sheer like level of just putting out a performance every single time he played like he ne he never dipped like any game I played with him he was just the same like such a consistent performer like so physical class ball carrier and just such a good guy to play with just because you knew um you knew every time you went into a game, he was just going to be sort of like leading from the front. He was a bit of a talisman kind of kind of character um, to play with. Um, Jamie Glynn's another one, just out of sheer just versatility, like such a good player, able to just play anywhere, 9, 10, 9, 10 12, 13. And he'd be doing it week in, week out, jumping around the place like um, um, they're the main. Yeah, and sorry. And then in my final year, another guy I didn't know about who played a lot of first team rugby when he was just in college his first year was Tommy O'Brien. I thought he was another guy who was class and um, similar to Jamie sort of could play around a bit, like play in different positions um, and just looked really comfortable at that level, even at a young age. So they were probably, they're, they're the guys that I sort of wouldn't have known about that. I was really impressed with when I played with. Yeah. The question I'm asking here is probably twofold. Um, one, what did you learn across that under twenties UCD and Irish under twenties year? that helped you in the subsequent year um, and you just said you had a good year what was the what were the enjoyable sides of playing a full season at club rugby yeah so um, I guess the main thing I probably took from the the year of playing like 20s and Irish 20s and stuff was it's probably just a, like a level of confidence of you know you play say Six Nations games against other countries and like I think when you're young you just have this natural tendency to to perceive 
guys the same age as you from other countries for some reason they're going to be way better or like you just overhype them and then you play against them and you know like if you're able to sort of hold your own it's a bit of a confidence booster um and then that 20s world cup we played in the summer was like we got to the final and we won like we beat uh, we beat new zealand in the group stage and we had a really good tournament and again that was another sort of um i felt like i came out of that probably with more confidence again that like you know i was able to compete at that sort of level um and then going into that final year in UCD, I just remember um, the way we sort of set up the team and stuff. Um, there was a lot of like influence on or a lot of encouragement for forwards to like move the ball a lot past the ball. And that sort of suited me. Um, and I felt like that was something I was good at and also improved a load. I improved that a lot during the year from just the amount of ball I was sort of getting and and the way we were coached and sort of the free license we were give, given to sort of play, um, I guess, slightly loose at times, but like, we were well put it this way we were never really reined back in and sometimes maybe that was to our detriment but um we were certainly consistent in that regard uh and I I really enjoyed playing like that like I loved having the sort of free license to be able to throw the odd speculative pass or um do something that maybe in other teams would be perceived not kind of forward like play but um and then I guess just like just the standard of player you're playing with in UCD like the whole way through every year I played in just such good players around you. Like, um, look at even some of the guys I played Chinese with, like, you know, like Will, Porter, Hugo, then the seniors, James Ryan, like all these guys have gone on to play for Ireland. And obviously outside of that, just just the basic, the crack as well as after the games. And there's just like a really good culture in the club. Like everyone got on, um, just like quite a tight knit club. And I just remember after games, it was always just like either people going out together. It was just a good social scene as well. Um, and like I'd even I'd still be in a WhatsApp group, but like six or seven of the guys I would have played twenties with and a bit of seniors with, still so keep in touch with a good few of them. Um, so yeah, it was just sort of basically everything you want with rugby. Like I just found it sort of ticked all the boxes. Good social scene, nice free flowing rugby. We were really competitive class players all over the teams. Um, so yeah, how big a role do you think emotion plays in games and? If you think it plays a role, is it the same at club level as pro level, or is it a bit more process and and going through going to work? I suppose at a at a pro level. I think it's I think it's huge at, at both levels. There's always that thing, no matter what level you're at, where like before the game you can sort of feel that thing, even in the chain room of like this this game slightly different, or there's just a slightly different emotional undercurrent going on. Um, and I, I don't think that ever changes like every, every sort of age I've played at past kind of like, I don't know, secondary school or like even kind of junior cup probably is the first time that sort of when it starts getting a bit more serious. Um, I think it's always a factor. Um, and it's why it's why like in big games, you know, team big in big games, good teams tend to turn up and like people will perform better in big games when there's that sort of extra added incentive and, and that sort of added incentive often sort of materializes as just a more emotional team going out there who want to win more. And um, I, I think no matter what level you play it, it's always a huge factor. Yeah. How does the relationship you have with the players you're playing with influence your emotional edge or tone going into a game? Yeah. Again, like it's, I think it's, I think it's so important. You know, I've heard some people before say, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter like when your teammates are teammates, you don't have to be friends and that kind of stuff. And like while I can see how like there's cases obviously where people mightn't be friends but are are great competitors when they're on the same team. I, I just think that's always like so important. Um and I guess I've been lucky just the whole like through school, UCD, um, Ulster, like I've just I've never really been in a squad where I felt like there's been like any negative energy between any of the players really and like UCD in particular, like I felt like every team I played for, everyone got on incredibly well. Maybe I was missing out on the small little tiffs going on between people, but like it seemed like all the teams I played for, everyone got on really well and like everyone wanted to play for each other and everyone was on a similar sort of um, similar sort of script. And I, I, yeah, I think it's incredibly important. I think it's it, it sort of coincides a bit with the emotional aspect you're talking about. Like naturally, if you're, I feel like if you're closer with the people you're playing with, it just means like, when it comes down to it, you're all going to be sort of rooting for the same goal. And, you know, everyone else is the same sort of commitment level to achieving whatever that goal is. Greg, just a quick one. So moving from college to Ulster, 
how did you find that? Was it was it a, a big step up, or did you think that kind of your time with with UCD had prepared you well for the the transition? I thought, yeah, I thought playing with UCNL like had had prepared me real well. Like the the jump definitely wasn't as big as as I perceived. There's probably an added level of like detail and understanding around the small bits you want to do that comes with having an extra you know whatever a four day training week or five you're in there every day it's it's just, obviously that's a slightly different level in terms of like how many line outs you can run through or how many plays you can run through but um that naturally comes with it just being a job but in terms of the actual playing like i particularly as a forward like i i remember the first few games i played they were definitely like very physical and fast but like I remember playing games against teams like Lansdowne, Clontarf, Corcon when they were fully stacked that were um that weren't weren't too far off it. Um certainly, yeah, I didn't feel like it was like an incredibly big jump. Um so yeah, no, I thought I thought playing in U C D playing in one A like definitely prep prepped me well.